we're Orange County. We are the champions of the USL, which um, doesn't get talked about as much as you'd expect as the MLS. But, you know, we're, we're still a real team with real fans and thousands of our fans come and watch our games. And our centre-back is an old teammate of both of yours, I think, Michael Orozco. Um, yes. And, um, you know, last year we won the championship. We hoisted a trophy in front of all our fans at the Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine. And we were beginning our preparations for next year. And we don't own the stadium. We are tenants of a council-owned stadium. And we were looking forward to planning next year, trying to talk to the council about uh, the plans. And then out of nowhere, we find out of five days' notice that there's an agenda on a council meeting where they're going to discuss whether LA Galaxy will be given the stadium for their MLS Next Pro team to play in. And then we would be evicted from our stadium, along with all of the other pro men's and women's clubs in Orange County, which, as anyone who follows football will know, is your stadium is your home. And when the local MLS team tries to get you thrown out, that is a, not a great situation for you, your clubs and your fans. So in, in this scenario, what, what's best case? What, what are you hoping for? Because is this a situation where you both will share this stadium? Is this a situation where you say, hey, you're the MLS side. You already you have your stadium. Don't come over to, to our neck of the woods in, in our neighborhood, our community, where, where we've built, where we put all this work into it and and, and think that you, you deserve uh, our, our stadium to play. And so in your mind, what's the best situation moving forward? Well, I think the important thing for us was to try and make sure people understand the situation. So there was a council meeting. We had five days to prepare. We I think the, the world of football, soccer on social media took a very clear position as to who they thought should be allowed to play in the stadium in Orange County, um, including Galaxy fans, actually, uh, but also LAFC fans who seemed to rather enjoy what was going on. But fans of teams, you know, San Diego and Phoenix, who traditionally are not our, our friends on the field, were out in support for us. And we rallied and we had 250 people turn up at a council meeting and sit there for four hours. And one after another, they stood up and told the story of why we should be allowed to stay in that stadium. Because, you know, we're Orange County Soccer Club who want to play in Orange County. And a team who literally have Los Angeles in their title probably shouldn't have that same opportunity, particularly when they're seeking exclusivity. Um, and wanting to throw us out. So, you know, the best case for us, of course, is to continue to play in that stadium. We would be happy to share it. I mean, LA Galaxy have played in that stadium this year because they played Cal United in the Open Cup and we share with Cal United. So, you know, we're happy to share as long as everyone's promising to behave themselves. But, you know, the best case scenario is we give our fans what they want, which is more football in that same stadium. Now, to go to the the far other end of the spectrum, can you sort of uh, paint the picture for us of worst case scenario, right? What this means for the club, what uh, what it would mean for the fans that you've been developing, for the community that you spend all your time in, just sort of what is the detriment if you were evicted from 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 this? Uh, kind of what would be the the sort of I guess domino effect? Uh, and, and and I believe regardless, you guys will will, will find a way to do what's right by by the club and the team and the fans and, and the community, but it has to have some, some repercussions in terms of, of how you go about your day-to-day -day business, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that there's, there's different layers to this, obviously from a fan's point of view, and obviously I know you guys obviously played at the top level, but you're also fans of football and you know what it's like to walk into a stadium and be there with your friends and your family and make those memories that you make in sport in a way that just it's impossible to replicate anywhere else. And we want to give our fans the chance to do that. But actually our club, you know, obviously we, we do happen to be the current champions of the league, but our business model as a club is to find good, talented young players and help give them opportunities elsewhere. And I know obviously on the show, you talk a lot about the Americans in Europe. And although he's not at the top level yet, Kobe Henry, who's the, you know, the under 20 centre back, we sold him to Stade de in France as part of that journey we send we want to send players on and we've sold players to Rangers in Scotland. We've sold them to Wolfsburg in Germany uh, and to teams in Sweden as well. So for us, we're actually trying to help American soccer and having a soccer specific stadium and a great setup where you can create this pathway for players to come through. There's something really important there that you can do with 
the amazing facility we've got, both the stadium and all the training facilities around it. So I think it's it's you know it's for the fans, but it's also I'm not going to say it's the future of American soccer, but it's a part of that journey that American soccer is going on. We want to be part of. Look, we're not thinking about other venues at the moment. We are determined to solve this, work with the council and get what we need, which is staying in that stadium. The club won't go anywhere. You know, if we have to leave, we'll find somewhere else to play. But for now, it's can we stay in that stadium, give the fans what they want and give our, our players now and in the future what they need? It is Would there be uh, any consideration for developing your own stadium at some point? Or has that always been, we're, we're just going to find a stadium that's already there for us to, to make our home, which you already have. But in case of LA Galaxy win and now you're evicted from that space, would there be plans to build your own stadium? Or is this like a, we, there's enough stadiums in, in LA, in Orange County that we can find and, and make our own? Yeah, and Dan, just for, yeah. for context of that, by the way, and sorry to jump in on top of Charlie's question, it, USL as a model has looked very much towards, and maybe not so much at the championship level, but towards real estate projects that create economically viable or sustainable clubs. So, it, you know, I, I guess to follow up on top Charlie's question, is that is that an option or, or something that you've considered? Yeah, and, you know, you're both absolutely right. I think this is very easy to say this as an English person because of every team in England plays in a football specific stadium. There's no sharing with cricket grounds, but you know, at, when I first started working in the USL, watching our team play away games at baseball parks um, or university facilities where there isn't grass, it it's not a, a brilliant look for the league. And obviously it's a growing league and, you know, we're off to play Tampa this weekend uh, in a rematch of the final of the USL Championship from last year, but you know it's a it's a baseball stadium, and I think you know for USL to grow, for football to grow, more soccer specific stadia are going to be needed. I think you know in the medium to long term, I think it has to be part of the plan. I mean, obviously, building a stadium is not a cheap endeavour, um, so which is why a lot of teams haven't yet done it. It has to be a consideration for us in the future. Um, but for now, you know, we're not we're not going to build a stadium in time for the first game on March the 1st. So we want to secure our stadium in the short term. And then I think we have to look at versions of that for the medium to long term. What is uh, what's the process, I guess, from here to to decision? Because time is going to run out quickly. Is there a voting process? Is there a lobbying process? I mean, who holds the power or the cards to sway this decision? Yeah, so there, there's. You know, unfortunately, with the way these things work, it's a little bit opaque. But, you know, at the moment, there was a council meeting. This was on the agenda, it came off the agenda. And whether that was due to fan pressure or legal letters were written, it, it came off the agenda. But that doesn't solve our problem for next year. We are seeking meetings with the council to talk about what this can look like for next year and for beyond. There will be another council meeting at some stage, whether it's on the agenda or not. I imagine that we would like to see our fans there. I mean, 250 people turned up at the last one. Um, when we know whether we need to rally the troops again, I imagine that we would want even more fans to come down and support us at that council meeting and just try and make sure the council understand how important this stadium is to our club. So, you know, it continues. We just have to keep this, you know, out there in the public sphere and just keep talking and trying to get the city to come and talk to us and hopefully get what we need. And, you know, we're grateful to you gentlemen for giving us the chance to talk about it today and the football community more broadly for their continued support in our battle to keep a big club from taking a little club away from their own stadium. Well, we're going to see a big club versus a little club in the U S open cup final uh, soon enough. In, in your words, how do you see USL, in, in the future, how have you been able to find those players that have fallen through the cracks? How have you been able to reinvent some of the players who were professionals playing in MLS, playing in Europe, coming back, and maybe just things weren't working for them, and all of a sudden they find themselves in USL and they they find their the best version of of themselves again. So, how have you seen the USL develop, and and what do you think that the future looks like? You know, I think the USL is is beautifully positioned in terms of its ability to take players forward uh, in terms of that journey to Europe. So, you know, if your choice is playing in, you know, an MLS academy um, with maybe no chance of making it through to the to the first team or 
come and play in the USL, play against grown men and, you know, be a young player playing alongside, you know, former US national team player Michael Orozco, but also, you know, all the things that you know as a player, playing with men is not the same as playing with other college age kids. So I think the development cycle for the players you can get a lot of value from the USL and the scouts from Europe. They want to see that. They don't necessarily want to see somebody who's played college. They want to see them having played against men. And the equivalent in England is, uh, you know, David Beckham went on loan to Preston North End and Harry Kane went on loan to Lake Norian. That's how they develop them by sending them to lower level to get that, to get that sort of battle with older players and learn all the dirty tricks and all the things. Be what it, see what it's like to be in a locker room with grown-ups, you know, all that sort of stuff. So USL is perfect for that. And so, you know, we've shown that with Kobe Henry. We've showed it with Aaron Cervantes, who we sold to Rangers. Give them a chance to play men's football, first-team football in games that matter, and then that gives them a chance to learn their craft and for European scouts to see them and come and take them. So, you know, obviously we're doing it. We're not the only team in USL who want to deploy that model to just give that next tier of players in America a chance. Well,